My name is Michelle Stockwell, and I feel led to share why I have asked to have my name removed from the records of the LDS Church and why I now seek to be led directly by my Father and Mother in Heaven and my Savior Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit. And I thought it might be interesting or um, to share what my experience has been thus far in my life. And um, before I do that, I also wanted to share that I have placed um, scriptures on each slide and the scriptures are important and to read. And so if you've just clicked on this and you're just listening to it, um, I just, I don't, I don't have time to read all the scriptures. Things are long enough as it is, and I am trying to make this shorter. So, um, I have had, I had several, uh, sets of grandparents that, uh, were in Nauvoo. I think these are, uh, I think between great grandparents and grandparents, it's like eight of them, eight sets that headed West with Brigham Young. I was raised by wonderful parents who taught me what they were taught um, by their parents. And I served an Elias mission in England, married in the Bountiful Temple, had five beautiful children, worked them through all the LDS checkpoints of baptism, priesthood, young men, young women's programs, and helped get my oldest son on a mission and marry in the temple. Over those years, I served in the primary as a teacher, scout leader, activity day leader. I served in the young women's presidency at some point a Relief Society counselor, and then as a Relief Society president when the new ministering program was introduced in 2018 and through COVID and until mid-2021 when I was a primary teacher um, until I received a calling in the state primary presidency. When we had the 5.7 earthquake in 2020, I was still serving as a Relief Society president, and I felt very strongly that that earthquake was a wake-up call from God, and that really... Um, uh, you know, got me to think, what am I doing? Am I doing what I'm supposed to be doing? And my two older sisters had been diving into the books of Daniel and Revelations as well, <clears throat> and also the book of Isaiah. And they were a great influence on me to look seriously at what has been written. One sister shared that Joseph never practiced polygamy. At first, I, d I didn't know what to do with that information. But on further inspection of actual records and the research of others, the scriptures themselves, and most importantly, asking God, I realized that God has never, ever commanded a man to take more than one wife. It took a couple of months to study and digest just that one piece of information. But as time went on, I realized that there was way more off and I could not support an organization that did not truly support the truth of God. And I asked to be released from my state calling. And then I asked for my name to be removed from the LDS church records. It was really important to me that I show my father and mother and my savior that I did not follow anyone but them. So over the past few years, I have been diving into the scriptures and realizing that some key things that I had been taught uh, did not match revelation that had been given to past prophets um, in the scriptures or the words of Christ himself. And as God is the same yesterday, today, and forever, all revelation will be harmonious and it will never be in contradiction to what was already revealed. And that is why the written word is so important, because it is a record of what God has already given, so that when we hear something, we can immediately read and see if it matches or is in harmony with prior revelation in the scriptures. Now with this, there is something else that must be addressed. We are never to trust in the arm of flesh. All revelation given comes to a mortal person in the flesh. Then they share it verbally or they write it down to be read later by others. In order to make sure we are not trusting in the arm of flesh, with anything we read or hear, this includes canon, we must then take it to God and ask if what we have read or heard is true and receive a burning confirmation of that verbal revelation or written word, phrase, or verse in scripture before we take it in as a truth. We must do this so that we are learning directly from our father and mother in Christ. If we get that burning confirmation that what a prophet said is true, then we learned it from the source of truth and therefore are not trusting in the arm of flesh. God does reveal truth to prophets, but we must then get a confirmation of what they received and learn from God ourselves. We can all benefit from listening to a message from a prophet because they have studied and asked questions that we may not have thought of. This can help us to be introduced to a deeper meaning of things and so forth. 
but they are mortals in the flesh. And so we can never just take what they say as truth. We must ask God ourselves and be taught directly from God in Christ. Christ was anointed to fulfill the role as Savior and Redeemer. He is to be our master teacher and guide. We are never to follow any flesh, no matter what they call themselves. We are to be directly led by Elohim and Christ through the Holy Spirit. Jesus is our example of how to return to the presence of our Father and Mother in the Spirit. Jesus repeatedly stated that he did as he was commanded from his Father. He was led through the Holy Spirit. Jesus did not follow any flesh, no priests, Pharisees, or Sanhedrin. He did not follow any person, only God through the Holy Spirit. This is what I have come to understand as how we truly follow Christ, is to be led through the Holy Spirit as he was. And it is here that we move from the law of the word to the law of the spirit, where we are totally and completely relying upon our father and mother and Christ through the Holy Spirit to be taught and directed in all things that we do. A knowledge of this has led me to be out of religion and seeking to be directly led through the Holy Spirit in all things. Jesus taught that we are to be in direct relationship with God. Relationship versus religion is beautifully displayed with the conversation that Jesus had with the woman at the well. Jacob's well represented the common beliefs passed down from generation to generation, primarily the law of Moses, since the time the people rejected seeing the Lord, also rejecting a direct relationship with the Lord on Mount Sinai, and instead they had to receive the law of Moses as a curse. Religion causes division, as evidenced by the conflict between the Samaritans and the Jews, and why the woman was surprised that Jesus spoke to her. Jesus stated that those who drink from Jacob's well shall thirst again. Neither the Jewish religion nor the Samaritan religion had brought the people to know their Messiah, though he stood right in front of them. Jesus was demonstrating that it is a relationship with God, and not religion that will get us to that living water that only Jesus can give, where we will never thirst, a well of water springing up into everlasting life. We can only get that from Jesus, not people who say they represent him. Only Jesus has the authority and the right to personally walk us through the redemption process, and it can only be done by him. We must take him as our master teacher to be able to return to the presence of our Father and Mother in heaven. Sometimes people encourage each other to go with their feelings, but the scripture says in Doctrine and Covenants section 9, 8 through 9, If it be right, I will cause that your bosom shall burn within you. Therefore, ye shall feel that it is right. A burning comes first, and then a good feeling as a result of receiving the burning. Galatians five twenty two talks about the fruits of the Spirit, but a fruit comes from something, and that something is a burning through the Holy Spirit. Then you will feel love, joy, and peace, etc. The reason we cannot just go with how we feel is because Satan can influence us with good feelings like peace, as evidenced in 2 Nephi 28 21. And others he will pacify and lull them away into carnal security, that they will say, All is well in Zion, yea, Zion prospereth, all is well. And thus the devil cheateth their souls and leadeth them away carefully down to hell. We are all in danger of this if we do not seek guidance from God in Christ. Our Father and Mother in Christ set up this process to confirm with them through the Holy Spirit as a protection against being deceived. Realizing that religion was not the correct path and that a direct relationship was the right path, that this was now my responsibility alone to work out my salvation and redemption with my Father and Mother in Christ, has truly been the greatest blessing and treasure to me. Spending that time pleading with God to help lead me to what was true and to ask them to teach me how to be led by the Spirit has helped me develop a stronger relationship, stronger than I have ever had to this point in my life. And in the process, I have finally learned what a burning from God feels like, and it is something that I've only learned in the last few months, as I have realized that I ha must um, have no person or organization between me and God and Christ this relationship is my full responsibility, and Christ is the one who is anointed to fulfill this role, to teach, save, and redeem us. As he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me.
Christ is the one who is anointed to fulfill this role. If we do not seek a confirmation from God through the Holy Spirit, and I mean a burning in our chest, not a warm fuzzy, not a good feeling, a burning from God. If we do not seek this of all we read or hear, then we are in danger of trusting in the arm of flesh and in believing the philosophies of men mingled with scripture. Doctrine and Covenants section 46 verse 7 says, But ye are commanded in all things to ask of God, who giveth liberally, and that which the Spirit testifies unto you, even so I would that ye should do in all holiness of heart, walking uprightly before me, considering the end of your salvation, doing all things with prayer and thanksgiving, that ye may not be seduced by evil spirits or doctrines of devils or the commandments of men, for some are of men and others are of devils. Mortals are imperfect, subject to temptation, their own desires, and their own limited level of understanding. This is why we are to confirm truth from God directly, the source of truth, as a protection to help us find our way. It was hard to learn that I had been deceived and now had to sort out what was true and what was not, and it has taken a lot of time to think, process, and pray. And it is an ongoing process, as there is still so much more to learn. Jesus is the one, through the Holy Spirit, that will unveil the lies of the adversary and help us to come to the correct understanding that we should have. There are so many things that the majority of members simply do not know and are not even looking into, and it is really important that they take the time to look into them so that they can find out from God themselves what is true and what is not true. The Lord said in Hosea chapter 4, verse 6, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me. Seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will forget thy children. Many records on the Joseph Smith Papers website, only made public around the early 2000s, have shown that Joseph never practiced polygamy, that he spoke out against it and excommunicated those that were found involved in it. I will leave in the description links to the Times and Seasons articles for July 1st of 1842 and October 1st of 1842, also the Release Society meeting minutes from March of 1842, and the original Section 101 uh, from the Doctrine and Covenants in 1835 is on the screen now, and I will also leave a link to that. Hopefully this will make it easier to find it, those things. Um, those are just a few of, there are others but hopefully that will be helpful to you. Please contrast the clear information from what I have shared from those links, what you read on those links, with page 490 of the Book of Saints, Volume 1, that states, quote, because neither Joseph nor Emma wrote down how they felt about plural marriage, many questions are left unanswered. This statement on page 490 is a false statement. We know that Joseph spoke out against it, and mostly from the public record that could not be changed by Brigham and other leaders complicit in the deception. There are many journal entries for Brigham when he arrived in the Utah Valley that say, spent the day with so-and-so revising the record. And I understand that some of these things were also changed in Nauvoo. What was the need to revise the record? Well, simply to change history to match what he wanted it to be. We also know that Brigham had secretly taken two additional wives between 1842 and 1844, the year that Joseph was killed. During the same time, Brigham had signed a document saying that the members did not support or practice polygamy. You can see Family Search to review the dates of Brigham's wives. Joseph only found out about Brigham and his wives a few weeks before he was killed. Brigham and other leaders kept their involvement in polygamy, a lustful, abominable practice, secret until it was announced over the pulpit in the Utah Valley in 1852. The supposed revelation was, um, was not printed for the LDS membership to read until 1876. It was in this same publication in 1876 that a section first published in the 1835 Doctrine and Covenants titled Marriage, um, and listed as Roman, Roman numerals C1 or 101 was removed. Section 132 contradicts prior scripture and was written years after Joseph was killed. Women were not happy in polygamy. No surprise there. 
but they had to speak well of it publicly for some so that they would not be put out on the street in the Utah Territory with no place to go and no food or support. Three years after Joseph was killed, Brigham took power unto himself. He was not called of God. It is documented that he said he never saw God, a very important requirement and pattern in the scriptures for those called as prophets. Several others, Heber J. Grant being one of them, also said that they had, he had not seen God or Christ. The one Lorenzo Snow story about seeing Christ in the Salt Lake Temple and sharing it with his granddaughter has been found to be unsupportable. It was originally told third hand, and no record of it has been found in Lorenzo's journals or found in any documentation of his public speeches. No record of the event has been found in his granddaughter's journals, and the granddaughter's husband said that his wife never spoke of the event. In a fireside about five plus years ago, Dallin Oaks answered a question that he knew of no one who had seen Christ. No one. I appreciate that element of honesty. In the early Utah days, it became the practice among the members to say among themselves, oh, they have seen God or Christ. It is just too special to talk about it. This may have made them feel better about their leaders, knowing that their leaders had not talked about having seen God themselves. The pattern of a prophet in the scriptures is that they've seen God, received a message from God, they share that God had given them a message, and then they deliver the message. The process or system the LDS Church uses today to determine its leaders is called apostolic succession, and it was devised by Brigham and not by God. I remember when we still used to hear people and leaders in the LDS Church say that we have a responsibility or right to find out from God ourselves, to confirm directly with God what an LDS leader had said. That has been more and more eroded and changed to you must follow what the LDS president says without question. And it has been heavily promoted, especially the last few years, to only look to the living LDS president as the authority on what is right, completely ignoring God and Christ and all the revelation given to prophets from Adam to Joseph Smith. That is not right or how things work. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The revelations that have been given and printed in Scripture are there to help us initially determine if what we are hearing matches with what God has already given in the past. We will then have to confirm it, but the record of what God has given is important. There are many times in the New Testament where Christ answered a question with, It is written. This example alone is confirmed proof that God wants us to know what truth has already been received and keep that information in our heads to help us. If we go with the Brigham model, that is only to follow the one who sits in the president chair, then you subject yourselves to tyranny without a check on power, to a Mao or a Stalin, to the personal opinions and agenda of that one person. And then if that when that person dies under the LDS model, then you are to reject all that that person has said and only listen to the current LDS president. What about priesthood? I have not had time to do a full search on this, but several have said that the LDS church does not have the Melchizedek priesthood, and that has been personally confirmed to me as a truth. It is documented that Brigham talked about not receiving the Melchizedek priesthood, and there are other discrepancies with purported history and dates that I listened to about a year ago and would have to find them to get better information. But one thing I did find is those in the celestial glory, fully redeemed people, are priests of the Most High after the order of Melchizedek. I personally feel only those that have been personally walked down the path of redemption and are redeemed have arrived at a place to receive this level of priesthood, and that it will only come directly from God or Christ, and not from one mortal to another. What about the LDS temple? It is not only of no use to us, it is detrimental to us. It is Brigham's Freemasonry mingled with ideas and phrases from the scriptures. Having to pledge allegiance to mortals to get in, and all that we have or will have to mortals is not making covenants with God. These have been promises to mortals. The pain to get in is also wrong, as real salvation through Christ is free. LDS ordinances are made-up covenants that Brigham and those who supported him made up, um, some of which as early as Nauvoo, but I think a great deal of it was here in the Salt Lake Valley. They were made up for the means to exercise control over people by giving them their version of salvation, which was 
by doing what they said instead of what Christ asks us to do. And um, a promise that that was the only way we could see family members in the next life. And God knows who we are married to and who our children are. And if we escape eternal damnation, we will be able to see them in the next life. This is access that God Mm -hmm. gives us. No need for a mortal organization to give us the okay. It was a very carefully crafted idea by Brigham that a person had to be married in an LDS temple to cause us to feel that this was the only way that we could see our spouse or family in the next life. It has made us feel beholden to them for this access, and it is simply incorrect. This is not what God outlined. Abraham did not go through a Freemasonry LDS temple ceremony when God made a covenant with him. Now I know that there are many members and leaders that are innocent and believe that they are just doing the right thing. I understand because I was one of them. But there are those that know that it is not right. As all religions either begin or end up, it was set up by Brigham as a means of ensuring power, position, and financial financial support for him and his sons and and other leaders that supported him. Tax-free as a religious organization. Freemasonry is a secret combination with similar signs and tokens, and usually only known by those at the very highest levels that they worship Lucifer. It is satanic. It is an occult. Some parts of the LDS temple experience are similar in wording, signs, and tokens. The penalties that are used to be spoken, that used to be spoken of individually and acted out, are quite similar, in some ways the very same, to the Freemason initiation and ceremony. None of that can be good. There are absolutely no righteous people in scriptures connected with secret societies, words, signs, or tokens. Only evil is associated with them. Some of the revised records that were made by Brigham and others in the Salt Lake Valley were made to try to connect Joseph and Hiram with Freemasonry. I believe these are all lies. I have read books and watched videos from various groups and individuals who are trying to connect the LDS Temple and Freemasonry with something in the past that was once righteous and that Freemasons had corrupted it, but that Brigham Young had led LDS members to have it right, and that is simply not correct. It is all wrong. When a knowledge that we have been involved, when a knowledge of what we have been involved in has been taught to us through the Holy Spirit, we then just need to ask for forgiveness and ask God what more we need to do to be clean from involvement in the LDS version of Freemasonry. Another direct contradiction to scripture is that of giving out of a new name by mortals to other mortals in LDS temples. In Revelations 2, 17, we read, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna, and will give him a white stone, and in the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth, saving he that receiveth it. Christ is the only one who can do this, and only Christ and the person receiving the new name will know the new name. No other persons will ever know it. It won't be a name that all initiates receive on a certain day. There will not be people there to record it or be able to look it up if we have forgotten it. Absolutely nobody but you and Christ will know that name. It is another safeguard to keep you from being deceived. Also, Christ is the only one who can seal you. Brigham combined his lustful desire to practice polygamy with the everlasting covenant of the gospel and the idea of sealing altogether. Polygamy is wrong. The everlasting covenant is the true gospel as taught by Christ himself, and only Christ can seal us. No mortal can. Interestingly, the idea of sealing changed quite a bit from Brigham to Wilford Woodruff, so there has been some guessing going on there. Christ fulfilled the law of Moses and told the Jews that he was the way, the truth, and the life. The Jewish words for the three courts or gates of their temple were related to the way, the truth, and the life. Christ was telling the Jews that they just needed their Messiah. He had come to fulfill the law. Revelations 21, 22 is where John sees the kingdom of God. And he says, And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. As children of God, we are also temples. All of God's children are the temples that dot the earth. Acts 17.24 God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in a temple made with hands. 
1 Corinthians 3.16 Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. 2 Corinthians 6.16 For ye are the temple of the living God, as God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. Alma 34.36 And this I know, because the Lord hath said he dwelleth not in unholy temples, but in the hearts of the righteous doth he dwell. Our spirits entered bodies that God created for our mortal experience. Jesus said, God is spirit, John 4, 24. Christ also has a spirit, and they can dwell in us if we are clean. Giving more knowledge to the scripture in Malachi chapter 3, verse 1. And the Lord whom ye seek will suddenly come to his temple. One thing to point out here. Uh, that's really important is that our father and mother in Christ are no respecter of persons. We have been taught our whole lives that only a few select special chosen people can see them. And that is not true. The truth is that we are all special to our father, mother, and Christ. And they did not put us on this earth to never speak to us again. And they did not leave us here intending to not let us see them in mortality. All who seek them can see them in spirit through the Holy Spirit. Our baptism is something that should only have been done when prompted by the Holy Spirit and not at an age designated by man is the only covenant that we will make with God that another mortal will ever see. Everything else is done in the Spirit with Christ or our father and mother as they work together in perfect unity. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are books that testify that John stated that Christ will come and baptize us with the Holy Ghost and with fire. In 3 Nephi 9, we understand from Christ, and, host, and whoso cometh unto me with a broken heart and contrite spirit, him will I baptize with fire and the Holy Ghost. 3 Nephi chapter 12, verse 1. This is after he calls forward the 12, and he states, And unto them I have given power that they may baptize you with water. And after that ye are baptized with water, behold, I will baptize you with fire and with the Holy Ghost. We need to believe the words of Christ. This is his role. This is his job to baptize us with fire and the Holy Ghost. And this is done in the spirit. And this is very important as in his conversation with Nicodemus, he said, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Okay, back to covenants. Any other covenants we make will be directly with them in the spirit. This is done by translation, temporarily raising our light to be able to withstand their greater light, then quickly returning us back to the light we currently have. This is what is meant by being quickened in the spirit. As far as I have been able to study in the scriptures and research, after one or more of these visits with Christ, Christ will take us to the Father, and eventually the Father will take us to see our mother, the tree of life. And she will explain to us who we have been throughout eternity, what things we have done for the kingdom of God, and what we have gained. This will help us in this life to fulfill the missions we were foreordained to accomplish. We are eternal beings, seeking to continue with eternal progression. Jesus Christ came and tore the veil and made all of this possible, we fully benefit from what he did if we accept accept him as our master teacher and guide we have an eternal identity and that is what our heavenly parents want for us to come to know to know who we are eternally and that can only be done by coming directly to christ and to our father and mother the plan of salvation chart that is well known amongst members of the lds church is not correct and i want to comment today on two items the resurrection we all hope for to be taken home to that God who gave us life should happen when we are in mortality and taken in the spirit by Christ to the presence of our father and mother. Acts 7.55 But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God. This was the experience of all who in Scripture were taken to the throne of God into the presence of our father and mother. We are not supposed to think that we have to die to do this. The goal is for this to happen while we are still alive in mortality, as it did with all who have seen God in Christ. I feel that Jesus taught us that we need to seek a relationship with our father and mother in him 
to learn what is true and be obedient to that truth, following anything from them that we are instructed to do in the Spirit. Jesus said many times that he only did what he was told to do and say from God through the Holy Spirit. He is our example of what to do in this life. John 6, 38, For I came down from heaven not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. The other thing that I would like to comment on is the three degrees of glory or kingdoms of the celestial, terrestrial, and telestial. Those are not places we end up. Those are the levels of glory or light that any one of us will be at when Christ returns in the clouds, and he has told many that he is coming soon. Most of the non-LDS believers in Christ are well-versed with this event, but they usually use terms found in the Bible as they do not have section 76 from the Doctrine and Covenants. The celestial kingdom are those who are the bride or the bride of Christ, fully redeemed men and women who are caught up to see Christ, the bridegroom, when he returns and comes in the clouds. The terrestrial kingdom are those who are part of the body of Christ and are believers in Christ, but have not finished being redeemed by Christ. And the telestial kingdom represents those who receive not the gospel, neither the testimony of Jesus, neither the prophets, neither the everlasting covenant. These are they who shall not be redeemed from the devil until the last resurrection. And there is more to read, and it's a good reread. And as we go forward with all scriptures that we read, remember that even scripture must be confirmed, as it was initially received, revealed to, fre- to flesh and recorded by flesh, subject to human error and sometimes malicious intent. We must confirm everything with God, and therefore we learned that truth from God and are following God directly. I have shared a lot in one communication about things that we were not taught by LDS leaders, but are found in the scriptures by revelations from God, and there is still more to share, and more I have not yet learned. I believe that myself, and I think many others, have been living in a state of cognitive dissonance where we say that we believe the scriptures are true, but we had also believed in LDS doctrinal ideas that are in direct contradiction to many important truths found in the scriptures, like LDS temples, which are really Masonic lodges. The scripture says that the Lord of heaven and earth will not dwell in a temple made with hands. That means any physical structure made with hands or by hands operating machinery, if that helps. We are the temples of the Lord that dot the earth. Being a temple does mean to take good things into our minds and hearts and bodies, But it is more. We are the literal temples that dot the earth. He will dwell in our hearts, as is the promise, if we make ourselves clean. Another scripture I find interesting is where Christ states, The kingdom of God comes not by observation. The kingdom of God is within you. The kingdom of God will be a spiritual gathering, one by one, as we sit at the feet of Christ in prayer and ask to be shown or have brought to our remembrance those things we need to repent of and clear up in our lives, to be right with God, to be taught and led by our Father and Mother and Christ through the Holy Spirit in all things in our lives. I was not very good at delving into scriptures for most of my life, but before that, when I would come across these scriptures, I sort of thought it was a nice metaphor or something. What I did not do is take the clearly stated scripture literally, as I should have, because I had believed the arm of the flesh, the LDS doctrines taught by Brigham Young forward. I believed that somehow they had worked through all of these scriptures and that there was some good reason why we did not comply with them. By default, I had believed that God had changed his mind. For me to think that there was some reason or change as to why we did not comply with these revealed scriptures or actual words of Christ himself. I testify that I have learned that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever that we must get a confirmation of all that we read or hear so that we are not deceived in any way. But we are taught directly by our Father and Mother in Christ in all things through the Holy Spirit. It was hard to suddenly learn that I was not even close to my goal. I had met all of the LDS Church requirements that they had set out for me, and I thought that I was doing okay. Knowing that I had more to work on, but feeling that on paper I had done all the major things that had been listed out for me to do. Always was not sure I would make it to the celestial kingdom, but hoped I would. And then to learn that I was very off in many ways was really hard, but I thought I just better find out what I need to know. 
and it has been so worth what I have gained so far in my efforts to build a relationship with my father and mother and Christ through the Holy Spirit. I share this with you not to criticize you. I was once a zealous member missionary, and I was still a good person, and I believe that you are still a good person. I just did not yet realize that I was taught some incorrect things. The LDS teachings often promote if one thing is true, then all of it is true. And that if you have felt the spirit that the Book of Mormon contains true things, then all that they teach, all LDS doctrine is also true. And that is not correct. By the power of the Holy Ghost, ye may know the truth of all things. We can feel the Holy Spirit whenever there is a truth to be confirmed. And that can happen anywhere. The Lord will meet us where we are at, but we must confirm each piece and not think that one confirmation of truth extends to other things that we have been taught. I do not know the pressures my ancestors were under. Brigham had bands of men and boys threatening members in Nauvoo, and out west it was even worse. My polygamous ancestors were deceived, but I am not their judge, and I also do not know the individual situations they faced. So I love them for holding on to any actual truth that was preserved and later taught to me. I am grateful to my parents, and I know that they worked hard to teach me that I am a child of God, that Christ atoned for my sins, that God reveals truth to prophets, that truth can be found in the scriptures, and that the Holy Spirit testifies of truth. My parents are not responsible for things that they have not yet learned in the spirit. My parents did not know all of the deception or lies behind Brigham's teachings from the past, and... I think it's possible that some of my ancestors did not know either. And neither did I, and so I taught my kids the same. It was all that I knew until about a year ago, but it started a little bit before that when I realized some things were off here and there and not matching scripture. As parents, when we learn what is correct and what is incorrect, we have the opportunity to teach our children and guide them away from Brigham's teachings and by following the arm of flesh. And we can lead them to just what Christ taught and to learn from God through the Spirit. But we have to first do that ourselves. Each person is at their own individual place, and it takes time to process all of this. So everyone will process these things in their own time and in in their own way. And we need to be patient and loving and kind. I share these things because I feel it is so important to not have any mortal flesh between us and God, and to know that we can have a direct relationship with our Savior Jesus Christ and with our Father and our Mother in Heaven. And it is important that I point out that I understand that when Jesus was on the earth, he had 12 disciples. And when he appeared in the new world, he also called 12 disciples. There is a pattern of leadership, uh, of, of uh, order in the kingdom of God. And I recognize that. What I'm trying to put forth as something that will not change is that even under godly systems of leadership, we must never trust in the arm of flesh. We are still supposed to take everything we read in here to um, to God and to Christ to make sure that we know that what we have read or heard is truth from them. And if it's not, then we have to reject it. If it is truth, then we can take it in as a truth and act upon it. But we are still not following flesh. Do you see the difference? This has been so important to me because I've spent most of my life following flesh. And the realization that that was wrong um, is just really important for me to share with others so that we are never deceived. Um, The leadership that will next come upon the earth will be the kings and queens that Isaiah prophesies about. Um, These are going to be people led by God, but with that, they are still in the flesh. They are still in mortality and they could still make mistakes. And so that is why, or choose, choose to do something wrong, right? They're still in mortality. They, they, they are still 
affected by the temptations of the devil. And if they don't keep themselves in check, they could choose to be led astray or to lead others astray. And that is why the principle of never trusting in the arm of flesh is so important. It's just an eternal principle. It, under whatever system we're in, we must trust uh, in our God and not in the arm of flesh. I do not believe that the LDS church is this system. They have not seen God and they are continuing in the support of Freemasonry, which is not correct. I don't believe that there is a religion upon the earth that is God's leadership upon the earth by any means. I have listened to people that I feel have, um, that I have confirmed have, that they've said that they have seen our father and mother and Christ. And I have confirmed that myself. There are those people out there. There are prophets and prophetesses among us. As far as I understand or, or am I aware, um, we don't currently have presented to us the organization of the kings and queens of Israel. And, but I do think that is coming because Christ is telling many people that he is coming and that will also come as prophesied. I, I just want to point out that I recognize that, but we are never to trust in the arm of the flesh. And that is the po whole point of what I've shared. Um, I know it's been long. Um, thank you for listening this far. If you've made it this far, it's really important to know that we are all special. We are all important to our father and mother in Christ and to have confidence that we can receive guidance from them. We need to trust in the Lord and lean not to our own understanding to remember that we should never underestimate the Lord and what he can do with us. Noah was led to build an ark and Nephi was led to build a ship to cross the great waters. Christ truly taught that he did all things as taught to him through the Holy Spirit. And that is our example. He is our example. We are to do all things as taught through the Holy Spirit. And we are to place that above all else.